I want to read a little bit from this complex review, if you don't mind. Did you read the review? The Which complex one? one? The complex one. No. All right. Well, you're probably going to be in awe on this, too. So, what you got on the screen here is the, the writer of this review, because I always like to put the writer out there. I think you need to know uh, their Twitter handles and stuff, so you can, you know, let them know what you think about the review. Anyway, he got to this point. He says... What's his name? Oh, you said you're putting it up? Never yeah, mind. yeah, Let I me got go it into on the, the chat. Screen. No, 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 I just need to go into the chat. I think so it's I like see. Peter or something, Peter or something. And Peter. so... All right, so he says, on the otherwise dope Get Light, which features a great Biggie interpolation, Nas unleashes a sort of a weak one-liner that's not even clever enough to be a fortune cookie. The sun doesn't even know it's a star. That's the quote that he's criticized. Then he says... That's what, they, that's what I was getting tagged in Twitter about. Okay. And then he says... When it's not so plagued by shoddy bars like that one, KD3 is hindered slightly by its uh, general lack of humor cadence that can be redundant and hooks that are rarely um, authentic. Nas sounds as comfortable as ever spitting over Hit Boy's glossy boom bap, but the sounds aren't electric enough to be distinctive and without guest features and or much uh tonation variation from esco things can get a little stale by the final few tracks kd3 isn't necessarily the apex nas and it might be better if it were trimmed down to the length of say magic but it also doesn't have to be for it to be a strong album so he wasn't impressed by the cadences. Said the cadences were redundant. Um, I don't know if he was expecting humor from Nas. That, that I thought that was an interesting take. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he thought he was listening to Ludacris. And I was, I'm not saying that to be funny, but I, I've never seen that criticism. What's his name? Uh, his name is His name is Peter Berry. But Peter Barry, yeah. But his Twitter handle is something different. I think it's like Peasy or something. Yeah, his Twitter handle is at uh, P E L L Z underscore. That, is that Barry with an E or an R or an A? I mean, uh, Barry with the with the B. B is in boy. No, with an E or or A. Oh, I'm sorry, B E R R Y. Okay. Yeah, but um. Yeah, he calls himself the light skin Yaga male or something. Okay, anyway, so yeah, that was um, his criticism of it. And then he went on to talk about the 21. Now, again, I found it interesting that Complex didn't actually rate the album. You know, building up to that section, you know, he had decent stuff to say about it. It wasn't really glowing, but I thought that that criticism was interesting. What did you think about that? Because I know you hadn't read this review yet. Okay. See, there we go. See, Peter Barry is tied to Double XL magazine. Mm hmm. He is. Yeah, well, they've been on some sucker shit for a while, so this isn't surprising. See, like, there's always a train that'll, like, lead you. Peter must you be need. in the room. We just got a thumbs yeah. down. <laughs> oh, don't nobody care? <laughs> Peter, what were you I'm saying? in the room. You have to catch this fade right hey, quick. Hey, you, you wrote this. Stand you on it. it. It's cool. Stand on it. Right? <laughs> what... If I write something, I'll stand on it. If I believe right. it. Right. Stand on what you write. Yeah. Just know that you're wrong. So he's a writer and editor in the New York area. You yeah. can follow him. Shine at, you say? Yeah, at Pels. P-E-L-L-Z underscore. Yeah, I'll put it on period. the screen again for the people. Okay, yeah, yeah, put it up for people. We're going to have a conversation. And he was pretty proud about writing it, too. He says, I got a chance to write about Nas King's Disease 3 and the reward of living to tell the tale. I guess he's Not expecting you guys to come through. It's about to be a long day for him. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, I thought that was interesting, though. But what do you think about the criticism of the cadences, though? I mean, do you think that there are any legitimacies here? Do you think that... That I bar on uh, Get Light stood out to you? Because I didn't even really, you know, it didn't re register to me. <clears throat> First of all, this is what I mean. 
why are you nitpicking like this great great record like like see what i'm saying is it's like you can't find st- when you can't find stuff this is the type of writing that you get like you know how far into the album you have to get to get to get like do you know how far you have to go through the discourse of breaking down what is fundamentally sound or not to you? And so you'll nitpick at something like that to try to make it seem like it's not entertaining. It's like, how old is Peter? Not sure. Sounds kind of childish. Sounds like he's young, too. And it sounds like like when somebody pulls up and says that they think the cadence on here is off, like, not to be funny, it's like, we sound like you might have been raised on a different type of rap, where mm. it's like the cadence quite frankly, isn't like what you think it is. That's not cadence. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. I mean, you may not know what cadence the... is. To... Like, I'm, I hate to say this, but like respectfully, it's like I don't think the motherfucker know what cadence is if he's complaining about the cadences on the album. Just like I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. It's like, man, be, what cadence means? That's what I mean. It's like might have to pull up and be like, what is cadence? And explain to me specifically when you're talking about the cadences on this album, reference songs and reference points so that we know what you're talking about. Because when you ask people to do stuff like that, they usually reveal themselves to be a fool. So we're about to find out if he's a fool or not in a little bit. Well, this this sentence was interesting to me, too, where he says, um, Hit Boy's glossy boom bap, uh, but, it sound, but the sounds aren't electric enough to be distinct. I felt like that the production on there was very distinctive. Um, I think that it was a lot of variety on there. That's where... I really gave it high marks from the different cadences that Nas chose, like even flipping it on some drill shit on some of the, uh, on uh, Reminisce at the end and the way he was kind of able to just speed up the flow, slow it down. He really put in some work to actually check all of those boxes and for someone to actually, you know, be critical of that like that wasn't there. And there's one thing to say that if you felt like he attempted to do those things and he didn't execute properly, you can say that. But he's acting like those things weren't even there, which I think is just a falsehood. See, <clears throat> so Mike, but this is what I'm saying. You have to watch who you're dealing with. So you, let's go to Peter's Twitter page right quick. Mm-hmm. You know the first thing? You know a pinned tweet that's put up right now? What's up? I saw his life slipping. This is a minor setback. You're still in all we live in. Just dream about the get back. That made him smile, though, as I said, pray for me. I do you better. Do you want better? And slay Slay these niggas faithfully. Mike, where does that come from? Uh, We know where that comes from. Let me go to Super you see how You see how quick you can get to the root of shit just by going and just looking. It's like, that's his pin tweet that's up right now. He posted that November 9th of 2017. So we already know who he partial and what he partial to. Because this is him. It shouldn't he's be using like this that. Bar. Mike, he's using this bar to quote an anime where two famous characters are fighting and one is dying. So he's using Jay Z to quote anime. He's a fan. Yeah. Jadaria right. So you're just going to go and start snatching your credibility away. <laughs> See, this is a beautiful thing about Twitter, too, is, is that, oh, no, no, everything that you do. Documented. Yeah, it's documented. We so it's like, are. go ahead and let's go ahead and get that out the way. You know right, let, me, let me get to the super chats real quick. I want to see what yeah, the people please. are thinking, and maybe I'm bugging. Jadarian, I'm, I'm just about to tweet Peter right now live and let tweet Peter know it's about to be a long, long night. His name is Light Skin Yagami at Pels capital P E E P E L L Z underscore. Definitely pull up. It's about to get entertaining. Have some questions for him. Yeah, Jadarian says uh, I'm doing this for uh, YouTube because I care for this podcast. Please listen to the podcast first. Some of these chats are somewhat misleading. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely listen to it. I don't want to pass judgment. That's why I said, you know, if what Joe said was that, then, you know, why would he say that? But, yeah, I'll definitely go listen to it. Because, like I said, Joe does a great job. Uh, Wild Soul 88 says, Nas is a great heavyweight champ, and 21 Savage is a strawweight fr- um, fridge contender. Uh, Marquez Davis with the Super Chat says, yeah. He said that he was better than old Nas lyrically. For people asking, it was a while ago. Like, homie, even on on your best day, get the fuck out of here. Um, he said the hooks. Listen to what he says. Like, cause now I'm reading it. Uh huh. The hooks that are rarely anthemic. Mm hmm. 
Who out here is doing anthemic hooks? I want him to give me some examples of these things. You see how writers will just write stuff, but they don't have any an evidence. What anthemic hooks are he talking about? Because I, I hate to be the one to break it to him. Ain't nobody talking about no an anthemic hooks on her loss either, but that's not in the review now, is it? It's not. Right. Boycott activist, um, Activision, excuse me, says, y'all do Shit. a call-in show, people uh, disrespect and still mad at we should do a call-in show on uh, Station, Station Head. Head. I was about to say, Mike and I have been uh, throwing some Station Head concepts around for recording the hip-hop and mm -hmm. for my live show. Like, uh, We're about to start doing some daytime uh, radio shit because the radio today sucks, quite frankly. And this, this Nas drop and Hot 9-7 still you know, being a hub and a sub in every major market in this country is a big, big problem. And... Um, yeah, I know a lot of people are asking, like, why Station Head and why not YouTube? Well, I mean, unfortunately, we can't play music on YouTube. You know what I mean? I'm gonna tell you what, um, and you want to know who put us on the Station Head? The plug. Yeah. Not the plug. Yeah, definitely, right. and it was a great look. It was a great look. I told the plug today this morning. I was like, oh, you big for that Station Head shit? Because we about to go ham on these motherfuckers. Yeah. Mad Max huh? in the super chat says, uh, "JBP's trash, Ice." Uh, uh, what is it? Ice fraud, uh, Jersey guy who always trying to neck neck the South. No disrespect, Joe needs uh, to pay Rory and Maul. Joe was never uh, Nas pumping it up. His ego, like bro, you you had one single and, and your pod's been shit since 2019. I'm gonna be honest, like I, like I said, I like what Joe does. I haven't really watched the podcast for real since you know Rory and Maul's departure. And not because of that, I just haven't. You know what I mean? Well, we've been busy, too, building yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mike, this is what I'm talking about. You got to watch these guys. Listen to what he says. Besides acts like Jay-Z, very few rappers have been this good for this long. Hold on. Stop. Stop. Pause. No, wait a minute. <laughs> Stop. Pause. I'm talking about besides Jay-Z. No, you mean besides Nas. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because right like, now, let's just be real. If we're talking about, if you want to play that game, been this good for this oh, long. Oh, pull up on Peter. Oh, there's Peter, nobody. Do Peter, I don't see, see, Mike, I don't be wanting to do this. I think that we have to do this so people don't think that we're bugging. And I know somebody, um, you know, with a super chat that's coming up saying something along the lines of, you know, instead of focusing on these dweebs, their words, not mine, um, you know, stream the album. Yes, stream the album, of course. But I do think that it's part of, you know, the conversation just to see what the major media outlets are saying about these things. Not for credential, uh, not to credentialize the actual artist or the actual project, but these platforms are losing their credibility when they're saying things that are starkly different than what the public's saying. It just is what it is. Non plus with the super chat says, um, set up another streaming party uh, for week two of KD3. If y'all down to do it, we down to do it. If y'all gonna show up, y'all gonna pull up, we with it. You wanna know what? I'm about to say, I would actually like to have some fun with it if we could. And maybe, like, if we're really gonna do it, like, let's play KD3 and KD2 and KD1 and Magic. Let's, like, line them up and, like, you know, like play them and like have some fun with it or right. just play the KD series. It don't even have to be magic. Let's like do a KD series party if we're going to do it. I like we've that. already done the KD three listening party. We've already I've already done the bar seminar for KD three. Let's give the whole series some love. Like let's maybe get a fourth one out of them maybe. So it's like I would like to do a KD party if we're going to do it like where we're running through everything. Because I also think running through the series, you'll hear the progression mm -hmm. and we won't have to have people like. Like Peter talking about how besides Jay-Z, people aren't this good this long. The last time Jay-Z made a dope album, my daughter was two. We're talking about buying her a car. Do people understand what I'm saying? Do <laughs> you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The last time Jay-Z made a dope album, which is the Blueprint 3. Like my daughter was two years old. And again. She has a job, Mike. She might go to France this spring without me. She'll be driving this time next year, Mike, in her own vehicle. She was two the last time he made a good solo album. Let me be fair. You and I aren't big fans of 444, but there are a lot of people yeah, who are, doing. right? There are a lot of well, people, people who are. But well, those people are wrong, Mike. No, I'm sorry. No, no, That's no, the no, media no, driving and pushing the let's... narrative. The music's not good, and those people have no evidence, Mike. Cool. Let's We've get... been asking for evidence on this show of why 444 is good for years now, and we have yet to find some concrete evidence. We have about three or four songs. It's like you do understand three or four songs 
means the album's not good, right? But well, not with Jay. When Jay makes three or four songs that are good, it's like, you know this album is great, Coop, right? Let's just say, it. It's like, no, it's not good. Coop, let's just say it's great. That's Give 2000. it up, turn it <laughs> Let's just say it's great, right? That's 2017. That's five years ago. And so when you got 2017 to 1996, what are we talking about? 21 years? Impressive. But then you got 94 to 2022, and then you got four albums in a two and a half year period. This man stands alone at this point. So, yeah, you can't say besides Jay-Z, like, this is just it, actually. That's like, that's like literally saying Tom Brady and be like, oh, well, besides Peyton Manning. No, no. Tom Brady's alone right now. That's what I mean. So, this is what I mean. It's like, where is this dude at? Like, where is he coming from? No, because I mean, we're talking about coming out doing some spot verses here and there, and if people want to bring up the God did verse, great. But if we're talking about full albums, Jay is missing in action. If you want to compare him to him at this point, you see, but you see, but this but is what I can. mean. Like, he see slid Jay in at the back of the article. Exactly. Like, he's trying to be slick. Like, I'm a writer. You're a writer. Like, we know when writers are being slick. That's why it's like, oh, I'm reading it. And it's like, I'm like, hold up. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's like, yep, there it go. There go that bullshit. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it comes across as, you know, when Nas is on a run like this, they're trying to find a way to slide Jay in and make him comparable to this right. run without actually putting out an album, which I think is the dishonest part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, they're not in, they're not competing with each other right now. Like, like I said, Tom Brady's out there on the field while Peyton Manning respectfully is out here commentating the games. That's what's going on right now. Now, is he going to come out of retirement and put out an effort? We'll see. But until that happens, Nas stands alone. Uh, Peter Parks with the Super Chat says, Consequence of Sound gave a glowing review to KD3. I like Consequence of Sound. Hold on, hold on. And this is another thing that I'm talking about, too. Listen to what I mean. Like, this is an agent piece, and this is why it's an agent piece. Mm -hmm. He just spent about three paragraphs on the back end of this article, leaving final sentiments for you, talking about how 21 Savage relevancy comment. Why is 21 Savage relevancy comment taking up a bulk of a King's Disease 3 review, Mike? And they didn't even rate the album. They didn't rate the album, and on top of that, this is what people have to understand. It's like, no, 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 that lives forever. So now when somebody goes and reads Complex Review... They're going to see that some rapper, 21 Savage, who won't be around as long as Nas, made these relevancy claims and make that part of the release of this album instead of making it about the album. You see how the media is still controlling the narrative? Like, 21 Savage has no place in a King's Disease 3 review. So this is a shitty piece of journalism, once again, because you're including things that have nothing to do with the music to skew it away from the fact that it's great. You're including so Jay Z that has nothing to do with the album. Right, right. Well. Jay, Jay, Jay's not here and can't fuck with Nas right now. Yeah, and that's it just, is what it is. That, and, that, and that's just a fact. And that's coming from like, somebody who has always said, I thought Jay was better. And you're factual in this. I was wrong. It's not even about right or wrong about this point, Mike. It's about what we can see with our own eyes, what right. we hear with our own ears. And so. When he wants to use the back end of this article to insert Jay-Z and 21 Savage into what is supposed to be a moment for Nas, do you understand what I've been saying about how the media is the biggest problem even today? Like, even past the numbers, because it's like, no, this is how they keep controlling the narrative. You're getting the end of a King's Disease 3 review, and they're talking about Jay's placement and the relevancy that 21 Savage is talking about, when 21 Savage probably isn't even going to be around half as long as Nas. Let's just keep it funky. And, you know, if you guys want to holler at, what is his name, the light skin uh, Yagamin, you want to holler at him about his review, here's his Twitter handle, uh, oh. at P-E-L-L-Z underscore. Let him know what you thought about his, you know. And like, and, and, but I will say this, Mike. Mm-hmm. If you don't like how I'm handling it, it's like, pull up on me. You know what I'm saying? Because truthfully, I shouldn't have to behave this way. Because people shouldn't be behaving this way. And I hate to say it, this is like, this is kind of how this business and this culture works. It's like, nah, if you don't put somebody out on Front Street and have them explain themselves and check their integrity and check their biases and check their page and see where their biases are at, they're going to do this. A lot of people feel like we shouldn't be doing this or I shouldn't be doing this the way that I'm doing it. But the fact of the matter is, is, is that 
well, it just got shit done. And this it really is how wasn't you get me because, you well, know? Well, 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 things need to change, but Mike, it's nothing if the people ain't with it. The reason that it changed is because the people was behind it because the people see it. So stop yeah. treating the people like they're foolish and they don't see it and feeding us this bullshit and expecting it to fly. It's like those days are dying. And we're seeing to it that it's dying because I ain't heard no Illmatic talk for the first time that this man has released Ever. the album in my entire life. This is Ever. the first time I haven't heard the whole Illmatic run all over again. And it's like, thank God. Like, like I want you to understand something. There's something fundamentally wrong about grown men who want to hold on to the thoughts of a 15, 16, 17-year-old, 18-year-old man their whole lives. You get what I'm saying? No, you're right. that's what Illmatic is. Illmatic is the thoughts of a 15 to 20-year-old young man and teenager. It's like you hold on to those thoughts forever, Mike. That's why I like Death Row East. That's right. a grown ass man talking on De- Death Row East. That's not the Nas I grew up with. That's the Nas that's a grown man. I'm a grown ass man. Let me you know tell you I mean? a little story real quick, man. And I don't want to get too too off topic, but um, you know we got HOA over here and all of that stuff, and it's my first time in life actually having those kind of things going on. Yes, and those can so, be very problematic as well. And so, you know, when you complain about, you know maybe trash being out in the neighborhood or whatever, whatever. Anything you complain about, you call these people, nothing gets fixed. But you know what? We got this community Facebook page, right? When somebody mm-hmm. puts it on that page, that shit gets cleared up real quick. When you let everybody know what's going on and everybody and gets put on Front Street, person, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. People get put on Front Street, unfortunately, shit changes in a flash. And that's what this is. I mean, you know, you, you don't have to like the approach. But do you like the result? Right. And so the result of it is, is we getting stuff done this way. And so we're going to keep getting it done this way because I am proud to say, I think how we're doing it is helping change the narrative because I think there's been a large majority of us out there that have been feeling this way and ain't nobody been checking them. Mm -hmm. And here's the beautiful thing about social media. The people have spoken. Well, just like, no, just like you get to put out this type of misinformation or skew this argument immediately with this review. Oh, well, we get to come right back at you and be like, well, what you mean when you said this? Yeah. Explain Explain. yourself. Explain. Like, like, I'm going to pull up on him and be like, explain to me how Jay-Z is relevant compared to Nas right now musically and why you put that in your article. Explain to me why this album wasn't rated. Explain to me why you're inserting three paragraphs of 21 Savage into a King's Disease review and calling yourself a review writer. Now, is this an editorial or is this a review piece? Because you go from reviewing the album into a Jay-Z and 21 Savage editorial. Now, are you a writer or are you an agent? No, these are valid-ass questions. Those are valid questions. And you're not about to skate anymore. And and the fact of the matter is, is that you know how many other artists on Nas's level have people that just put the same energy that we did into making sure that they succeed. Like this isn't uncommon. It's just, it's uncommon for you to see it come from people who enjoy Nas's music. Mm. This isn't uncommon to you. No, Beyonce's no. people. Yo, Mike, you wouldn't say, something, say something wrong about Beyonce. Mike, <laughs> I wish a motherfucker would. I wish the motherfucker would Mike. <laughs> Eric Terrell with the super uh, chat says, and appreciate that twenty dollars super chat too. He said on Trevor Noah Nas himself said in other genres of music they don't compare uh, their artists. If the Rolling Stones are winning, they don't talk about Kiss. So why do we do it with Nas album is fire? Why does somebody lose? I'm sorry. Why does somebody lose for Nas to win? I guess why does somebody have to lose for Nas to win? Right. I mean, listen. At the end of the day. His rev- the album review should only be talking about the album. And if you're going to talk about it, any artist, it's got to be him. He's in no man's land. There's nobody to compare him to right now, period. And honestly, too, throwing 21 Savage's bullshit in there, for lack of a better term, it's irrelevant. <laughs> I want to use that. To- He's you irrelevant. What? what he has to say about a legend that has accomplished this much in hip hop is irrelevant. Well, Mike, he's tagged. He's he's with Double XL, or affiliated with as a writer. He's retweeting Jay Z bars from Dead Presidents in 2017. He's literally bringing up Jay Z when Jay Z has no placement whatsoever in here, unless you're talking about the bars on Fun, unless you're talking specifically about the bars on Fun, has no placement in here. We're past reviewing the album because he's at the end. See, he ends it. 
with his personal feelings and his personal feelings is it's like, let me skew this a little bit to make sure the guy that I love the most, you know, remains in this conversation remains on top. So I'm going to sneak his name in and then I'm going to talk about what 21 said about Nas. You feel what I'm saying? And that's exactly what he did. It's and, a little hit piece ish to be real. And, 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 and no, they, see, this is what I mean. People have to understand this. Has the, as a criminal gets smarter and finds new ways, so do the police and the operations and the intel that come with it. It's a constant game. And so now they know that they can't do the Illmatic thing. And so they're finding more passive ways to give you the bullshit. That's what all of this is really right. been about that we need to get to. The posting of the Grammy pictures. Okay? The 21 Savage comment. We're going to talk about 21. It's about to be bad for him up on here. In the oh, movie. yeah. And what I noticed about... We're about, we about to talk about your ass without including Nas. How about that? You know what's interesting? I don't know if you read the Hip Hop DX review where they gave it a 4.1. And I'm going to go ahead and give some shine time to that inter- that no, reviewer no, no. as well. We, we need to finish. We, I'm, I want to finish with Complex and fin- finish with my boy Pete right quick. Okay, yeah. First first of, finish with Pete. But what I was going to say about that review, though, is the fact that I noticed that the term relevant was used a lot. Relevance and relevant. It's like, is that the new word to switch out for Illmatic? That's what I'm saying, Mike. You're paying attention. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You see what they're trying to do? It's like, oh, well, we can't bring up the old stuff, so let's bring up if he's still relevant since we can't talk about Illmatic. See? Yeah. Well, is he relevant if we can't talk about Illmatic then? See? See how a media person thinks it's not a fan of his? It doesn't support the music that supports somebody else's agenda? What were you going to say about Pete? I'll go ahead and finish up on Pete so we can get on to this DX and then get on the Savage. To quote the sample that we just got from West Side Gun on Peppers, don't take this ass whooping personally. This is about hip hop. And so when you get your card pulled, you need to like, you know, take it like a man because too many people is like coming out and making it seem like, oh, no, no, no. This is what you get, what you deserve. Like you said, you're going to have to stand on it. So I just want you to stand on your words when I pull up on you and tag everybody involved and find out what you really think. Because I believe we did that before. People started deleting their Twitter accounts and like backpedaling. And it's like, no, 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 no. Stand on, stand, stand on you too and just say who you love. Now, I give it to Will too. Dukes. Will Dukes over there at, um, at Rolling Stone. He didn't back down. He responded. He told people, thank you for uh, reading the article, yada, yada. And I, I, I tweeted out to Will Dukes, like, look, man, what's going on with the review, man? Where it's at? Where we at? How we looking? Oh, no, no, no. I seen you asking for the review, Mike. <laughs> it's very nice how you asked for the review. I don't See, think Mike, we're you were getting very, it. Uh, you were very, um, <clears throat> you were very, um, What's the word? You and my grandfather were born around the same time in terms of like days. You're very pragmatic and like thoughtful like he was. And I used to try to be that way. And I realized that like I wasn't like him and that wasn't getting shit done for me. But this way does. And that's what's up. <laughs> I was right. like, look, how's it going? How's it coming along, man? I'm, I just want to. No, no, no. It's very, it's very thoughtful of you. You know, <laughs> Mad Max of the Super Chat says, um, what's tonation variation? Uh, tired of these Oreos or other dudes talking about rap music. You want Nas to do a young thug impersonation? That's Fuck what I was trying to say when he's like, he doesn't really know what cadence is, Mike. I wanted to say it. It's like, oh, well, it sounds like you grew up on Future and Thug, and there's nothing against that because I'm from the A. It's just you may not know what cadence is, really. In let terms me, of let me see what the rest of the people have to say in the Super Chat because this is going to be interesting. Kendall Outlaw says, uh, looking for humor in a Nas album. When was Nas ever known to be funny? People will say anything for a reaction. <laughs> Uh, let's see what other super chats. Uh, Andrew Green with the super chat says, "Did y'all see Hit Boy's interview with uh, DJ Academic on Spotify?" In my opinion, Academic did a good journalistic job. Hit Boy's backstory is inspiring. I did not see that, and I agree with you. I think when DJ Academic does his Spotify show, he actually does a really good job. I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> um, we got some more. Super chats. Hit I know Boy. Behind. Because Hit Boy supported us. Oh, definitely. And the rest of these motherfuckers was acting like we didn't exist, knowing yeah. that we existed. Well, shout out to Hit Boy, yes, man. The post yeah. was, it was dope. Yeah. I mean, because again, people at uh, certain levels of notoriety, they may see the show, but, you know, they never acknowledge. And, you know, Hit Boy didn't have to do that. We really appreciate it. That was a good look. Kendro, Mc, um, Kendro says, laughing at all the Nas hate. Ha, ha, ha. Like Elliot Wilson's corny laugh. 
<laughs> Not the Elliot Wilson laugh. Non plus with the super chat says instead of wasting energy on these lame reviewers, let's go stream KD3 and run up the numbers. Uh, they want to take the attention away from KD3. We can do all of that. We can set up another streaming party and we'll multiply the numbers and you can do it individually no, as well. Um, 36 Chambers says uh, there are four beat switches and cadence changes in Michael and Quincy. Fuck out of here uh, with that weak ass critique. Sounds like someone who doesn't get it or just didn't listen to, at all. Or is an agent, Mike. <laughs> I can't say this name is uh, a walk. He says, uh, what are your favorite hip boy beats? Not songs of, of the run. Mine are number one, Big Nas. Number two, The Cure. Three, Store Run. And four, Thun. What are some of your favorite hit boy beats from this run? Um, I probably have to go by album. If I'm going in reverse, I mean, the production jobs on Mike and Quincy and WTF SMH are just, they're just stellar, Mike. They're yeah. otherworldly. That's the type of stuff top 10 all-time producers produce. Yeah. Those are the kind of records top 10 all-time producers produce. Records like that. So those two records come to mind. Mike, I love Legit. I love Legit, when, too. When, when, when I read that article and said non-anthemic hooks, I'm like, the second song is an anthemic hook. Yeah. And it's an inspirational one on top of that. He's actually talking about you maximizing your hustle if it's illegal and making it legitimate to halt to all black homeowners mm-hmm. throughout the lease. Once like this is what I'm saying. Child, this is the guy that you want to trash. No, Mike, it's like he said on WTF SMH, and it might be verse of the year. In the community providing jobs, why would you come for me? Why you ain't proud of Nas? Yeah. Like that's really what we really need to be asking. Yeah. Think about it. That's my question for Agent 21, too. I mean, we're going to get that. Provided jobs, why would you come for me? Why would you come for Nas? Think about all the other people that these people could be coming for. Why do they come for him? Because he speaks this black power shit. Did you just see the super chat from NDU Jams? He says, community love, providing jobs. Why would you try to come for me? Why you ain't proud of Nas? Everybody's thinking the same thing. Mike, what was I playing when, when I called you? Yeah. When you called me? Because yeah. I can't get it out of my head. I'm like, yeah, like, he's right. That means he, like, Mike, he's in tune. He knows it's going on. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? He's been knowing it's been going on for a long time. I think Why that, would you come for me? Yeah. Why you ain't proud of Nas? Listen to what this man's saying. Why would you come for me? Why you ain't proud of Nas? We, got we really got to start here. asking that question legitimately. Yeah. Like, it's been legitimate, but it's like, no. Why do people keep coming for him? You know, I think that, and again... I don't mean to bring up Jay, but it was a part of the disc record that I always thought was funny and it was weird. I was like, Jay literally knocked Nas for kicking knowledge on take. Right. Like, what, what kind of... So that's a diss? It was like, switch up your flow. Your shit is garbage. You trying to kick knowledge? Like it was the wrong thing to do or something. Yeah. Super chat here, uh, we got, is Alfredo better than Pinata and Bandana? To me, it is. Yes. To me, it is. Uh, about that. Michael Williams of the Super Chat says, Michael and Quincy is a miracle. I'm not sure I've ever heard the execution of a song and match the vision so perfectly. Hit went crazy with the switches. Uh, Eric's Rub of the Super Chat says, KD3 Productions said, like, yay, in a great way. Okay. Uh, Peter Parks of the Super Chat says, um, Nas makes the uh, the insecure, I'm sorry, makes the insecure of these guys come out. I guess the insecurities of these guys come out. Uh, they hate because they can't do what he's doing. Or they don't like what he's doing or the direction that he's taking when he does it. Well, um, you know what? Here's what it is, Mike. Nobody really owns him or controls him. He does what he wants and yeah. he speaks the way that he wants to speak. It's like he He's reposts free. who he wants to pro- post. He does ads with who he wants to do ads. Like he does what he wants to do and people don't like that. They don't like that he doesn't belong to anybody. They do- Like Mike, I keep telling people, 
this is a black empowerment album on top of like all the great things about it. It is. He is saying something empowering, uplifting for our people almost on every record. And that is really what I think the problem is at the end of the day. Because the only reason that I can think of why he has all these issues, Mike, is because America says that if you're black and you're proud and you're intelligent and you're better than your peers, we're going to do everything to try to tear all of that shit away from you. And he's preaching unity. That's the thing. And because he's telling, United, there's a song called Don't Shoot the End This Album. Yeah. And beef. Those are, this is how he's ending it. This is a this is a unity thing. Like he starts off by telling you to go legit. Yeah. Bryce W with the super chat says, Nas did a KD series plus magic and people still talking about that sub mid Jay Z on God did. Uh, Jay Z verse on God did. Also, Magic's not getting any Grammy love is a fail. Yes, we're gonna get to that too. CJ Kid with the super chat says, "Do you guys think that Nas and Hit Boy will put out an artist of their own and form their own gangstar foundation and call the group King's Court?" That's a lot. Have Hit Boy produce for those artists too? I think Hit Boy said in an interview with Ebro that you know he has a lot of stuff going on as far as producing for other artists. And Nas has a lot going on with a lot of his, you know, companies and film. And so that sounds like more of the direction they're going. And when they come together as a unit, they make music. So Frank Wizard with the Super Chat says, uh, but brothers want trophies. Uh, they troll for clout. Rap is weird. Weird flex. But okay, you ain't as uh, ill as you think. You just okay. King's disease. Andrew Green says, ironic. KD one bars. LOL, but brothers want trophies. They trove a clout. Rappers weird, weird flex. But okay, y'all ain't as ill as you think. You just okay, yeah. Jay Short is in the building. Says, sorry I'm late, fellas. Uh, 10 for a koofy hat. Yeah, I love the 10 for a koofy time. Let's get it. He says, so Jay post those Grammys. Had nothing to do with Nas. It was to, um, to lend his legitimacy to those BS nominations they put out there today. They're not slick. Anytime that you do uh, add worth to an institution, yeah, you do credentialize them. I do think that Jay-Z posting all of his Grammys did continue to validate the Grammys. I mean, how could it not? He was showing off his Grammys as an accomplishment. Validation. This is the same person that used to boycott the Grammys. Too. Exactly. Until you start winning them. Uh, Brooklyn Kennedy with the super. He started chat. doing what? <laughs> Until he started winning them. Buying. Oh come on. Jay earned them, man. Which ones? I uh, he has so many. It it take me a long right. time. Uh, to uh, uh, okay, Mike. You got <laughs> very very muffled when you were talking about those Grammys. We're just gonna go to the next conversation. Brooklyn Kennedy says one mic is the phrase used to moderate the room. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it is actually. Uh, who was using one mic to moderate the room? Oh, the Twenty One Savage uh, thing. They were using one mic to actually moderate the room when people start Very talking. Yeah, it was like when a bunch of people start talking over each other, the host would be like, "One mic, one mic." Funny, right? Uh, Blue Collar <laughs> Hustle with the super chat says, uh, "Since y'all called out, uh, none of the reviews mentioned Illmatic." Or they, since y'all called it out, none of the reviews mentioned Illmatic, or they do so to highlight Nas's longevity. Great job again, leading the way. Now, I did see in this complex review, he found a slick way of talking about a bar from Illmatic without mentioning Illmatic, and I thought that was intentional. Where he was talking about the um, the buck that won, uh, that bought a bottle, could have struck the lotto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was like he mentioned that bar without quoting in it, without saying where it was from either, and I thought that was intentional also. LP says, really? nah, Coop. Yeah, he did it at the top of the review, I believe. He says, um, you did it how you how it had to be done. Respect. Talking about going in on these people. Um, Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, Black Star Show in NYC last night was phenomenal. Large Professor performed in West Side Gun. No Fear of Time songs are even better performed live. I will say this, man. I want to say this on air. And I meant to put this in my notes. Black Star was incredible on SNL Saturday. 
Oh, they were? They were incredible on SNL Saturday. I haven't yeah. watched the chip. Yassine and, just... and, and Talib tore it down on uh, SNL Saturday. They did? They I'm going to watch the whole show. I've been hearing about the Dave thing, too, so I'm going to watch everything. I'm, I might do that tonight. It was one of those things, though, I don't think that the audience knew what they were watching, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit was so raw. And they performed... The two songs that I thought should have been singles anyway, because obviously on this album there is no singles because nothing's really been released. What did they perform? Um, shit. I just kind of know these songs by the tracks, but the second track on there, and I want to say it was like the fifth track on there. I, I want to say it was um, Make the Main Thing the Main Thing. Mm-hmm. Chris Daugherty with the Super Chat says, Coop, y'all answering y'all questions now. Let me ask, uh, how much does Jay-Z control these publications, or do you think the media is acting on its own? Well, this is what I mean. When we act this way, in his favor, people are like, y'all are on a crusade for Nas. It's like, no, we're just like literally the first people to consistently speak out because these publications are obviously uh, not... Um, They're biased. Fans, fans of his message or belong uh, corporate, corporation wise or money wise in bed with people who don't want to do business with Maz or his adversaries or his competition. And that's just the fact of the matter. That's why I'm saying it only we only we're only standing out, Mike, because everything literally is on the other side. It's a script. You know what I mean? Like everybody is right. on a script and we're just acknowledging the fact that. Like, if These there was some balance, good. Mike, it wouldn't. We wouldn't be standing out, <laughs> right? Right. The if fact that we're standing out is showing you the imbalance that's going on. That's why I keep right. doing what I'm doing, and we keep doing what we're doing. It's because it's like, well, you're still not being balanced, right? Jay Short with the super chat says, "A two H A is the antithesis of complex, first of many battles." Oh well, they don't suck that bad because we're great, and that would mean they're not any good. I like they're, Complex. They're I think they do a about good to say, job. They're solid. Yeah, I mean, they do a good job with their visual content, but when it comes to the actual music, though, I think they're more about fashion. You say they do a good job with their visual content. They do. They're more about they're more about sneakers and fashion and stuff like that. Oh, than right. They are the, the, the music. ancillary things. They handle yeah. the ancillary very well. Yes. They're kind of yes. like. They're kind of like MTV used to be with hip hop in the '90s, where it was like, yes, yeah, very you know? much so, very much so. Uh, JSN highlights. Like, you you huh? still like some MTV jams, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MTV right. jams, but they ain't got no Bill Bellamy's over there. I don't think. JSN <laughs> highlights with the super chat says, "My five favorite Nas songs in order: Verbal Intercourse." It's not his song. Oh, is it huh? songs or my five favorite Nas songs in order? You mean features? All right, verbal intercourse. He got more money, more murder. Ether, Project Window, and it ain't hard to tell. I I see where he went there. Um, let me get to the end of the super chat. Did you read the uh, Hip Hop DX review? And we can kind of go on to this Twenty One Savage thing. I did. What did you think about it? <clears throat> How did he get a four point one? Yeah, he didn't really explain any of that. You know what I'm saying? And the writer of this one was Eric uh, Dipey. I think that's how you say his name, Eric Dipey. Yeah, uh, and this is the gentleman right here. But yeah, he kind of just—it was very bland. He really didn't say much of glowing things. It didn't say anything critical either. And it's just I feel like, like wh- how do we get to the four point one? I mean, Mike, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I feel like we got niggas shook right now. That's what it looks like. That's what it feels like because by now. Pitchfork normally puts out their Friday album reviews on Tuesday. Yes, I know this. They're okay. definitely shook. Oh, no, they, they haven't shook. put out anything. Rolling uh-huh. Stone, they haven't put out anything. Will do. Oh, if you're afraid. in the room, let us know how that review is going. I don't no, know. No, 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 no. They're afraid. We know they're afraid. <laughs> they better not because they don't even really belong to this culture like that. So they're, you know what? Them actually not doing the review is like the smartest thing that they've both done in a very long time because, well, they're very well, very well aware now because of us that they're not a part of this culture and not really wanted by this culture. And so when they step into this culture, they better contribute, contribute properly when it comes to assessing our legendary figures. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to trash some dude that just came out that don't have no notoriety in this game? He needs to make a better album and gain his notoriety. 
but you're not pulling up on a 50 year old MC on the best run we've ever seen, maybe in music for an artist his age, talking that shit anymore because you don't even belong to this culture. So yep. they are actually being intelligent for once because they haven't been intelligent before because the way this narrative is gone, you've been able to pull up on him and slander him and tear him down at a moment's notice. So I'm glad that they took notice and shut the fuck up. <laughs> and on that note, we should go to the next topic. And now a moment and a word from our sponsors. Right. 